Hi, this is M, and today I'm going to go through basically the eco printing that I did for 2020. It's the end of the season, and pretty much everything's gone now. And so I uh, just basically, between work and doing the garden, I had time to just eco print and just put them in this file. And I really haven't looked at them since I put them in this file. And now what I want to do is go through and pull some of them to scan. And I thought while I went through these, I would go ahead and turn on the camera. I did a couple of new things this year that I'll point out. And this would be for if you're into eco printing or you like to talk about botanicals and different flowers or you want to see what flowers do what. I also brought in a little carry-all that I use so that when I do a particular flower, Rather than just saying, oh, it's that flower, I can show you specifically which one it was from out of my garden. So if you have it, uh, you can go ahead and, and think about that. I know it's a little late in the season, unless you're doing some fall leaves and, and foliage and flowers, which, of course, it's not too late for that. But if anybody out there is like me, as soon as I start putting the garden to bed, I'm already thinking about things I want to do next year and making plans. So this will be my last eco-printing video for the year. And I do have a playlist. I'll link to relevant things at the uh, either at the end of the video or down below. All these papers were all on prior to doing anything. I'll also link to the uh, my favorite paper, which is the which is this size here. And I'll go into more detail about that when we move forward with the video. And the other last thing that I'll mention before we get started is people often ask me what. Uh, how long do eco prints last? And it, as far as the color, and and the answer, at least in my humble opinion, is it's kind of like pressed flowers. Different botanicals last longer than others. For example, in pressed flowers, there are plus pressed flowers that will last for five, ten years if they aren't exposed to sunlight. Sunlight, UV light, is the worst thing for pressed flowers. You know, fine art. Uh, eco prints, anything like that. So if you're doing journals or, or putting things somewhere where they're not in direct sunlight, a lot of these things are going to stay nice and pretty for years and years. Um, so just play around. I certainly think it's worth the while and, and uh, let's get started. This was something that I tried this year. This is the, this was a Gladiola. I just took the whole gladiola and laid it on this uh, this piece of paper. This is an off cut from larger size papers. And I thought I wasn't expecting much, but I thought that that did okay. Again, this is just another off cut. I'll go through these kind of fast except for the ones I want to highlight. Here's another off cut uh, dahlia and I'll talk more about this in, the, in a minute when we get to those. And another offcut, dahlia and geranium. This is the other side of the, uh, <laughs> the one I just talked about, <laughs> gladiola. This is the opposite side of the gladiola. These are, again, like I said, I haven't been through this in a while. This is some sort of geranium. And when I say geranium, my primary color geranium is this, although sometimes they go even redder. So that's, that's what would have caused that. And this must be the other side, yeah. This has nothing to do with eco printing. It's just in the file. I don't know what I did. I, I don't know, I was spraying stuff or doing. All these eco prints, that are actual true eco prints are natural. I haven't put any artificial dyes in any of them. This is a red lettuce leaf. And you can see how how they go. They make a really, it's hard to get these kind of truer green colors, uh, but the red lettuce leaf does that for some weird reason. So that's what these are, red lettuce, red lettuce. And then, I don't think this one was very exciting. What, what was it? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> quite frankly, what that was. I'm thinking it might have 
been, um, I don't know. I can't even speculate. But for background paper. This was wax begonia. What I did was I took a bunch of wax begonias and strewn them around on the page. And then I took these and did the same thing. I took them off and, and strewn them around the page. So this pink color is from the gardenia. Uh, gardenia. From the... Uh, I don't know if I misspeak. Uh, those of you that know your flowers will, will know when I'm misspoken because sometimes my mouth and my brain don't aren't in sync. Wax begonia, this is the color that I used. And geranium. I really, I've done this particular uh, combination before because I really, I don't know what it is about it, but I really like the patterns that this gives for some reason. And so I've, I've done this pattern for a couple of years, although, of course, you know that, that they're never the same. None of these ever turn out the same more than once, but at least I, I know that I like this combination. These are Dahlia, and typically your, your more orangish yellow will go orange. The, the, a lot of times they'll go more orange. And it reminds me kind of a... Of a of a sunburst. Very intense. And of course these are the different sides. This is the back side. So you can I can tell that that's where the stem was. And then this is the front side. And, th and these were so big and so wet. I mean these, look at how big, how big they are. I mean it's bigger than my hand. And they're so wet inside amongst themselves that the front where all the petals are kind of goes into this um, blobbish type pattern with a lot of uh, fun stuff all around the edges. This is, I believe this is this. And if it's not this specific one, it, it's something related to that, but I'm pretty sure it's that one. And then this this here is this guy. I'll turn around so you can see it. And I believe these yellow, no, the yellow ones are bidden. Did I bring a bidden in? Yeah. This is bidden. This here and here. And then other miscellaneous. This is probably dahlia leaves and so forth and so on in there. So that's what made, and this one, even though this is kind of a reddish color, you can see how it went purple-green. Coreopsis family is always pretty reliable for going orangish and different shades like that in the biddens. The other side, bring it up to the camera, how beautiful that is. Now this is something I did new this year, front and back. Let me turn this around so you can see. And the only piece I had left of it to show you <laughs> is this. That's all I have left. But you can see that this was the original color. And then this went, I was actually kind of surprised. It went a, a pretty decent bluish green. And you can probably recognize by now that this is some more of that wax begonia that I like. Let me bring this up because I thought that that turned out pretty well. The other side. Again, some more of the same thing. This one's even better because look at look at how you can actually see the the inside. This is the front. This is fern. That's this fern. It's a, it's a little thicker fern than some, but it makes a really good imprint. So there's a lot of different kinds of clematis out there, and so give them a try. I really didn't, tr we have a number of kinds, but this was the only one that I tried. And so next year I think I'll try some more colors, because I'm really impressed with how that turned out. There was the front, and then this was the back. 
some more dahlia. And again, I've got a lot of, lot of different kinds of dahlias, and so some have, are more, um, I don't know what's the word for it, more closed like that. And then some of them have, let me get this one to demonstrate, are more open. See how it has more open in there? And then some of them even have more of a, an open face than this one. This one was, I don't know which one, I don't think it was either of the two that I just showed you, but look at how, how exciting that is. And then these are dahlia leaves. Dahlia leaves do really well. That would be the back side I just showed you. This is the front, I think. Yeah, that, that was the back. This is the front, and so I know it was, had more of an open face on it because of, of the room in there. Another dahlia. You probably get a feel that I love dahlia. Now this dahlia is from this guy. And what's interesting is look how you get these purple colors in there. See how you get this purple color in there? Which I find interesting and I have no idea why it does that, but it does. That would be I'm not sure which one's the, I, guess, I think this is the front of the same thing, but you see how it, it has that purple in there? This didn't do much. This was, uh, uh, I don't even know what it was. This was another kind of a, I think it's a, a fam member of the osteospermum type family or Marguerite Daisy family, I don't know. But it goes a real nice purplish green. These are dahlia petals. Really nice, turns out well. Dahlia holds their color for a long time. A lot of these, Coreopsis, Cosmos, they, they are all, these are pretty all good, pretty good color holders, especially if, like I said earlier, if you don't put them in the sunlight. Some more of those. Some more of those. This is uh, Cosmos, and this is the color Cosmos that I use, the, uh, the deeper pink. It's also the color that I press. And those turn out really well. And you can see that was the, I think that's the back. This is the front, so the front lays down a better imprint than the back does. And I think I mentioned already all these papers were alum, and I will link the video to about aluming paper. The ratio for alum is another thing I get asked about a lot, and I believe the video that I'm going to link goes into all those details for you. This is this is fuchsia, Tom Thumb. It's just a small single fuchsia that I have, and if I'm lucky, I'll get some of this kind of purplish, bluish. See the purple in there? It's that kind of color. This is a larger sheet of paper that I folded in half. And again, there's that. Now see how purple this one went? It's the same one I just showed you. See how purple it went? I think it's really neat. You just you just don't know what you're going to get. There's 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 several different cosmos on this sheet of paper. That's this is the the I think this is the front and the back. That's the same one, but this one's different. And I, this is the back and the front of this one. So it looks like there's two different kinds on here. This is another another dahlia yet. You get more greenish around the outer petals. That's the back because you can see the stem here. But see how well the leaves do. And then this is the front. And and a lot of times I actually think I like the back better. It's got more definition. Uh, that one, yeah. It's it's not not my favorite, but there it is, <laughs> such as it is. Uh, this is just a conglomeration of dahlia petals and 
I don't know. I don't know what. Same here. I just grabbed some dahlia petals off of the off the plant and scattered them around. Here's some more red lettuce. Look at how how intense that is. Look at that purple in there. So I guess we're getting closer to red. At least we can lay down a little bit of purple. This is lupin. Blue lupin. This side's even more pronounced with lupin. Blue lupin with a yellowish uh, on the bottom there. Some more. Oh, this one turned out really good. Look at the centers in this one. Some more of that clematis. Backside. This backside turned out. This one. These are even more pronounced than the other ones I showed you earlier. So I've probably scanned the ones that are the most pronounced. I, I'm not going to scan all of these. This one was. I just took a bunch of fennel. Fennel. Fennel is very very wispy. See how thin those things are? And I was just curious to see what happened. It made a hot mess. So, I don't know, maybe for a background or something. Hot messes aren't all necessarily a bad thing. It's just... Now this, I don't have, there's none left in the garden now, but this was a pink foxglove. A lot of you probably have foxglove in your area. And this has uh, been which I think I already showed you. Uh, been a, a larger bin. As you get as you get further into the season, the, the flowers get smaller and smaller. The the earlier the season, the larger the flowers are. Uh, Foxglove is pretty reliable. Does really well. They don't press worth a darn, but because they're so wet, but they certainly seem to eco print pretty good. And I like the color. That's the other side. This was, I think that this is cal calendula. Is that what those are? Uh, orange or yellow calendula. This is daylily. Let me turn it around. I think I did this way. And the daylily I have, which are, well, there's several different kinds, but the one I use is kind of a reddish color. But it goes, it, one side of the petals go purple, and then the other side kind of do, do this action. And then the, and then the, the stamens uh, do this really pretty orange here. That's some more daylily. I really like this one too. What did I put on here? This is another mod 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 podge of stuff. Uh, I'm sure it's wax begonia, dahlia petals, and I don't know what. Some more dahlia. I'll start moving along faster because some of these are going to start being repeats. Now this is a better example. Uh, <laughs> I did a better layout of the. Daylily, so you can get a better feel for they look. This looks more daylily like than the one that I just showed you a minute ago. And I don't know what these are. Well, I know what they are, but I don't know the name of them. So here's another one. This is a combination of a what I call my fancy Coreopsis, which I didn't bring in, and then Cosmos. I really, really like the way these turn out. This is a Ligulier, uh no, uh, Ragusia, I do believe. They're really big. You can see how, how big the leaf is compared to my hand. But they make that really nice, rusty uh, co color. I really like them. Now, this is Queen Anne's Lace. And oftentimes, they go the green. It's hard to get a true green, but this one is a pretty good... A pretty good greenish color. And something on the other side must have affected it. Okay, this was affected by another kind of Coreopsis, I believe. More Dahlia, Fern. 
more Cosmos. You've seen these before. I've talked about these before. This is um, Lupin Leaf. And this is, I don't know, more Dahlia, small Dahlia. You know how Dahlias come in the smaller ones, the smaller, more miniature type size? This is some more of that geranium. And it, it's interesting because look at how purplish red this one went compared to some of the other ones. And I don't know why. I, don't, I, I have no idea what, what it is, why that happens. Some more Dahlia. Cosmos. And see if there's anything else interesting to show you. There's some more Dahlias on there, I know. Some of these didn't turn out very exciting. This one didn't. What technique did I use? Uh, mm. Early in the season, I used the pot method. Maybe you have seen these before. If you looked at my one of my one of my uh, more recent eco dyeing videos, which would have been a couple of months ago, I showed you all about the pot that I use outside the roasting pot. And early in the season, I used the roasting pot, and then later in the season, I used the the heat press. And again, I've got videos on using all those. And I, and also early in the season, I used an iron. So those of you that watched my earlier in the season videos with those particular items, you've probably seen some of these. You've seen this before. This was, um, this was a juga. And those I did with the iron. The juga, I remember, I did it, it did it in the video that I showed you with the iron. So, let's see if there's anything else. Now we're getting into maple. I've got a lot of different maples, but this is one of the kinds that I used. They do really well for the most part. More juga. And again, I think I used the iron on that. This is euphorbia petals. That goes that. Uh, Kind of a rusty yellow color. Marigolds go a, a orangish marigolds go a real rusty yellow color too, and this is the um, again some of you have probably seen this. This was uh, iris, Siberian iris to be specific, a blue Siberian iris, iris. This is Ligulera. The only Ligulera I have, have left are the leaves are all icky. But here's the leaf. They're very large. And then here's the back. And I think they do exciting things. I really like how they, I think I said this before, how they wiggle around there. More of that fern that I showed you earlier. This is the other side of the Ligulera. So see how one side goes, goes totally different in patterning? Than the other side. Some more lupin leaves. I think these are from earlier in the season, so I'll just go through them faster. You've probably seen these before if you've watched. And let's see, anything else that I want to highlight? I don't. I think you, oh, here, these are cool, and I, you might or may not have seen them before. More ridden. This is very large coral bell leaves, which they don't usually get that large, but these did, and I thought those turned out really well. Ligulera. Here's a here's a carrot. This is from a carrot leaf. I got to, I don't think I told you this quick story. I I I grow Queen Anne's lace and in in the spring I go and I don't see any Queen Anne's lace. I was kind of panicking because excuse me for bumping the camera. 
I didn't have any Queen Anne's coming up. So I went to the health food store and I bought some carrots with the tops on them. I cut the top off about that far into the carrot and then I planted the tops out in the yard and they actually grew. They grew and gave me leaves. Here's some more carrot leaf. Gave me leaves for pressing. Um, and also in one of my pressing flower, how to press flowers video, I show you some carrot florets and gave me carrot florets. Well, lo and behold, later in the year, I did finally have some Queen Anne's lace. So, phew, I was able to press some true Queen Anne's lace. So that was, that was a good thing. Now this one was a little bit more exciting. That's carrot and then something on the back is affecting it, which is the maple leaves. Here's some more coral bell leaf, more leggy there. Look how big that one was. That guy was huge. All right, we'll just go faster. What are we on? 26 minutes. Again, I love, 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 love those. Some more dahlia. Some more. This is that red dahlia that I showed you earlier in the video that I brought in <clears throat> that goes purple. Now, any of the ones on this large paper, I think for the most part, I, I use the heat press. But my heat press can only accommodate a six, a 15 inch. It's 15 by 15. <clears throat> Excuse me, I clear my throat. And so that's why I had those off cuts that I showed you at the very beginning of the video, because most of these are eight. Most of my, this is watercolor paper. Most of my watercolor paper is 18 inches. Some more dahlia. This is watercolor paper, these larger pieces. Look at how nice that one turned out. Some more dahlia. Some more dahlia. Oh, I was saying earlier in the video that this is uh, marigold goes pretty, pretty true rusty. Marigold and something. Some more bidden. More Ligulera. Oh, I thought this one turned out good. This is some more of that uh, Siberian Iris. The other side of Siberian Iris. Ligulera. Red Lettuce. Ligulera. I have a thing about Ligulera. This is some more Dahlia. Red Lettuce. Okay, getting to the end. Some more. And most of these are things that tore apart when I was doing them. Let's see how this one this one ripped. A lot of these are just they fell apart. This is a strawberry leaf. Okay, this is what, is, what was this? I think this was foxglove leaf. Some more cosmos, more dahlia. Now these were, you know, these are just little pieces. These were, these are actual cards. It's kind of an ivory colored cardstock, but they're, they're already cards. I, I bought them from, I believe, Joann's. And so I thought, oh, I'm just gonna eco print them and see what happens. And uh, I should have thought ahead because to me this this should be the front of it, but I actually prefer I think I prefer this layout better. So I wasn't planning my front and back. Although this could be the front too. I don't know. So I thought I'd I thought for for putting in a journal or something I would uh, make this like a little notebook to tuck in into something. And same here. This was a uh, a card. That I, this was already a card. So what my thinking was, well, just make a greeting card with eco prints, or use them to uh, to put some 
paper in for journaling and, and insert it into a journal or something. Or this is looks to be about a five by seven, so something like this could even be framed. I mean, I think this is really exciting looking. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Just like I said, don't put it in the sunlight. Again, here's another card, background paper, and another card. But look at how well the dahlia leaves do. Okay, so the other thing that I said I was going to talk about and I didn't was the, the paper. I will link it. My favorite paper is, get down to where they all are, is this size. This is, a, I believe, 9 by 12, and I have a lot of it. And it's a multi-purpose paper. Yeah, this is 9 by 12. It's a multi-purpose paper, not as thick as a lot of the watercolor papers. It's got a smooth texture. Uh, so it, it's actually a good weight for either using, you could use it for journal pages, or you could use it for text spots because it's got a good weight to it. You could even use it for tags. It's thicker than, I think I mentioned, I think I already said it, copy paper. But it's not as thick as watercolor paper. I wouldn't want to use a lot of watercolor paper for journal pages because it's so thick. So having said all of that, uh, I guess that's it. This video is already long enough, going on 31 minutes. Hopefully I will be able to, between work and your garden, clean up this fall, I will be able to start doing some more videos and maybe creating and actually making some things with, with the eco prints and the pressed flowers. So if that's something you're interested in, hopefully you'll subscribe and, and stay tuned. And I truly appreciate you watching and you have a wonderful day. I think I'm still recording. <laughs> oh no. Turn off shortcut. Okay, if that was being recorded, I. <laughs> bye bye.